Good afternoon, Pastor David. How you doing, John? Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Uh, Pastor, this is something I really don't hear from the pulpit uh, taught about, but I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, those who may have gotten pregnant out of wedlock. They've, you know, they've, they were engaged in, in, in uh, fornication. They get pregnant, they have a baby. Is that a reason to get married? No. Next. <laughs> <laughs> No, of course not. You know, I, I've shared with this fellowship before that there, um, there are actually worse things than, um, than having uh, uh, committed the sin of fornication and becoming pregnant and something that would magnify that or, or, or bring even more uh, difficult, uh, produce a diff more difficult situation would be to uh, on the basis of being made pregnant or becoming a pregnant couple, getting married. Because you already have made uh, one of the biggest mistakes as well as sin, the great sin. You've already done that and it can very often magnify beyond mm -hmm. that. So I don't believe that becoming pregnant is the reason somebody should get married. If they're a Christian couple, they need to understand that the um, that they have committed a sin in in uh, the act of fornication. They need to understand that. They need to really understand and and repent from that. And it doesn't make it right or erase it just because you got married. Mm. You know, it's it's still a sin, and unless it's repented of, it can have different kinds of of um, produce different kinds of things in your marriage that you don't necessarily need. So I've had people, young people who have approached me, John, over the years who have used that as the reason for marriage. And I've, I've never been the pastor who will say to them, well, let's get you married and then we'll fix the mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. Because whatever it is that led them to that kind of intimacy needs to be understood to some degree and whatever the circumstances were that produced the environment that allowed them to involve themselves very often without any sense of shame or guilt over that, those things have to be addressed. And so I have, uh, on a few occasions over the years, been asked to perform a ceremony, but I always will say, no, what you need first is you need to have some premarital counseling, mm -hmm. you need to, to learn what the foundations of marriage are how to have a successful marriage and things of that nature. You need to have those things discussed in order that you can grow in your understanding of these things. And, and then when you go through the, um, the uh, counseling and, and, uh, and you get married, you're going to have a foundation that you can build on. Mm -hmm. And so there are times that people, the only thing that has made them uh, stay together has been because of their sex that they were having with one another. They didn't have anything else in common. They just had, you know, a mutual attraction in that way for one another. And that certainly isn't the basis of uh, why a person should get married. Mm -hmm. Is it oftentimes, Pastor, the mentality is, quote unquote, two wrongs will make a right? And it's in that sense where they're, well, we'll just fix it by getting married. Yeah. That's not really the ultimate answer. No. You know, sometimes someone will become pregnant, they become aware that they are, and they, to save face or um, to do their best to not hurt their family, uh, they may have their marriage, they may get married because of those things. But um, I, I would counsel against that. I would. I would say, you know, you, you've made your decision, you've entered into this, and you really need to be prepared and you really need to uh, learn some of the reasons why you went into that and why you did right. that and things like that. Yeah. I mean, you're building on the wrong foundation. Mm -hmm. So pregnancy in and of itself is not the, the, the right reason to get married. get married. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing on that. That's a, a topic that somebody had actually wrote in about in, in response to the love and lust and and said, well, we've, I'm already pregnant, we've gotten married and not quite sure if this was the right thing exactly. that we, 
and uh, and sometimes the the children will suffer and oh, they and, will. Uh, and so uh, so I thought that was a good question that was actually written in and wanted to get your perspective yep. on it and so well you guys I hope you enjoyed that Pastor David thank you so much excuse me guys <clears throat> uh, we have church services coming up Wednesday evening at seven p.m. Yep. And may I share what book we're getting into? Yeah, we're going into Romans. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go into Romans. We're in chapter 1, and we're going to look at the first 15 verses of the book of Romans. It's, Romans is called The Gospel According to Paul. Mm. It's a fantastic book, and I, I haven't taught it to our fellowship in um, um, many years, and so I look forward to it. Oh, it's going to be a good study very fruitful and I want to invite you guys to invite your friends and family come out and join us and then again to join us on Sundays at 8 30 and 10 45 as you're taking us through almost done with Mark. Well it's going to take a while to get through it but yeah this upcoming Sunday we continue our series through Mark. We're in chapter 15 and we're con con going to continue uh, looking at a few of the verses that relate to the crucifixion of mm. Jesus and I begin to introduce what have been called the seven last sayings of Christ. And uh, I've already caused myself to tear up just by reading and, and considering uh, those last words. Mm. It's, a great, it's, a great, it's a great study. Enjoy, invite you guys to come out and join us. And then one final reminder, anybody that serves within our ministry, yes. on Saturday, February 25th, uh, we're going to have at 9 a.m. a uh, servant's, ser servants meeting where we get together and we hear from you, Pastor, yeah. Q&A. If they're, if they're serving. If they're serving, it, actively it's serving. It's not an open meeting. It's for those who are actively serving. And so come join us. It's going to be in the mini chapel. It's a great time of Q&A &A and uh, worship, and, and, and Pastor gives us a devotion. And so hope we're, for those that serve can come and join us. Amen. Pastor, thank you again so All much. Right, God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.